Now we're going to study the force of friction, which is clearly something that this bear could have used a better understanding of. Although, if only bears could read signs, then perhaps this wouldn't have happened. Well, what exactly is friction? Friction is actually a force between surfaces that resist motion. So if I look at this um, graphic really carefully, if I have two surfaces between, say, this block that I'm trying to move along this surface right here, and I zoom in on the space in between them, I see that the edge of the block and the edge of the surface are actually not smooth but very irregular. And these irregularities get caught as you are moving one surface against another surface. And they get stuck and they break free. So there's really a lot of resistance to them sliding across each other because of um, the nooks and crannies in the surfaces. And so that leads to a force, which we call friction, that resists motion. So when we do, let's say, a force diagram, we would always make friction oppose the direction of motion. So if you're pulling the block this way, we always draw friction as working against you. Now there's actually two kinds of friction and they're both illustrated in this graph. First of all, if this graph is measuring the amount of force it takes for me to get an object moving and then keep it moving, notice this. So if I start pushing on a crate on a floor and it's really heavy and I'm having trouble even getting it to move, so I push harder and harder and this graph records greater and greater force that I'm using. Finally I reach a certain amount of force that I get it going and then I just keep it moving. And I notice that the amount of force needed to make it start to move is greater than the amount of force that's needed to keep it moving. So I call this amount of force that it takes to get it to move the peak static friction. And the amount of force that it takes to keep it moving I call kinetic friction. Well, what factors affect or determine the amount of friction that I'm going to have? Well, first of all, since we define friction as being related to the roughness or smoothness of surfaces, uh, obviously how rough or smooth the surfaces are would determine the amount of friction. So if surfaces are very smooth, there's going to be less friction, and if surfaces are very rough, there's going to be more friction. So that's certainly one factor. Well, how can you measure how rough or smooth surfaces are for calculation purposes? Well, to do that, we use something called a coefficient of friction, which is a rough measurement of the smoothness or roughness of two surfaces. We represent it with the Greek letter mu. And where we get them from is we are given a table um, of them on our reference table. So let's have a look. So if you look on your reference tables, you will see something called approximate coefficients of friction right on the front page. And you'll see various surfaces. Notice there's always two surfaces, one against another. And the coefficient of friction is given as just a number without units. So you have kinetic coefficients of friction and static. Kinetic meaning if these surfaces are actually moving against each other. And static is if you haven't gotten them to move. It's, it's a measure of the force of how hard it is to get them to move. Now remember, these are not frictional forces. What they are actually is just a measurement of roughness of surfaces. Notice that um, for surfaces that are very smooth, the number is low. And for surfaces that are sticky or uh, rough, the numbers are large. Now the second factor might not be as obvious. Um, the second factor is how much contact there is between the surfaces. So even if I have two surfaces that are pretty smooth, so I would think there would not be much friction, if I push those two surfaces together very tightly, I could still have more friction. Or likewise, if I have two surfaces that are really pretty rough, I can still minimize the surfaces by having them only very loosely touch each other. Now the amount of contact between two surfaces, we have already seen
That is called the normal force, which we wrote as Fn. So the two factors are how rough or smooth the surfaces are, and the other factor is the, how much normal force there is, or contact force, between the two surfaces. Now the way you calculate the force of friction is just by combining the two factors, the roughness of the surface, which we use with the coefficient of friction, and the normal force, or the force of contact between the two surfaces. So the way we would simply write it is the force of friction is simply the product of those two factors, the coefficient of friction, times the normal force. So what I would do in a problem where I have to calculate the force of friction is if I know the surfaces I would look up on that table the coefficient of friction for those surfaces and then I would have to find the normal force or the force that the two surfaces are pressed together with and I'd multiply them together and that would be the force of friction. Now to see how all this works Mr. Thompson is going to do a simple lab to try to determine the coefficient of friction between this textbook and the table and he's going to do it by pulling on the book with the spring scale that's going to measure the amount of force that he is pulling with and he's going to just try to pull the book along the table at a constant speed just like this Well, how could pulling a book on the table with a spring scale help us to calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between that book and that table? Well, the formula that we would use to calculate coefficient of friction is the force of friction equals the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Now, there's a big difference here. This is the force of friction. So this is actually measured in newtons. And this is the coefficient of friction, which is just a factor that measures the roughness between the table and the book surfaces. So if we want to measure the coefficient of friction or calculate it, we solve this formula for coefficient of friction, and we get that it's actually the ratio of the force of friction to the normal force. So the way I want to do this experiment is, if I could measure the force of friction between the table and the book as he's pulling it, and I could measure somehow the normal force on the book and divide those two, then I would have the coefficient of friction. So I kind of have two experiments in one here. I need to be able to measure the force of friction, and I need to be able to measure the normal force. So let's take them one at a time. First of all, how can I measure the force of friction here while Mr. Thompson is pulling this book? Well, first of all, Mr. Thompson is pulling it with a constant velocity. So that's going to be very helpful for me measuring the force of friction. How could that be helpful? Well, first of all, if Mr. Thompson pulls with a constant velocity, that means the acceleration of the book is going to be zero. And the importance of that is, according to Newton's second law, the acceleration is the net force divided by the mass. If Mr. Thompson pulls the book with a constant velocity, the acceleration is zero. And that means the net force is zero. Well, let's just see what the net force would be. So I'm going to advance this a little bit so Mr. Thompson is kind of in the middle of doing this. And let's draw the forces that are acting on this book. So I'm going to have... The applied force that Mr. Thompson is using, we're going to make it so it goes like that. That's his force. Notice that looks like that's around 3 right now. And the force of friction is going to be opposing him. So it goes in the other direction. And that's the force of friction. Now I also notice that uh, gravity is certainly acting on this. So gravity which would be pointed down towards the ground. And then, of course, there's a normal force. And the normal force is the force of the table up on the book. And that one's vertical. Now, if 
Mr. Thompson pulls at a constant velocity. There's no acceleration, which means there's no net force. And the forces that are acting this way are the applied force that Mr. Thompson is using. Call it force applied. And the force of friction that's resisting him, that's the net force. But we just said that that net force is zero. So the bottom line here is Mr. Thompson's force is actually equal to the frictional force if he pulls with a constant velocity. So once again, no acceleration means no net force, means that his pulling force is equal to the force of friction if he pulls with a constant velocity. So actually, whatever this scale reads right here is the frictional force if he pulls with a constant velocity. And it looks like he's getting just about three newtons there on the scale. So here's the plan so far. Our lab is to determine the coefficient of kinetic friction, or the roughness factor, between the book and the table. And according to the formula we just learned, I have to divide the frictional force between the, while he's pulling the book by the normal force. Well, first of all, what I found out here is if he pulls at a constant velocity, his pulling force is the frictional force. And we found that it's uh, about 3 newtons while he was pulling it. Now all we need is the normal force. And if you remember from our diagram, if the book is not moving up or down, that means the normal force, which is upward, is just going to be equal to the weight, or the, the normal force is going to give me the weight. So if I could just know how much the book weighs, that would be the normal force. So now you can see Mr. Thompson is holding up the book with the scale. So he's actually weighing the book. And if we look at this, we can see the scale reads about 14 newtons. So the weight of the book is 14 newtons, and when you put it on the table, at rest, vertically, the book has a normal force acting upwards on it of 14 newtons. So I'm just going to write 14 newtons in here. And when I divide 3 by 14 newtons, I get 0 0.21 Notice that there are no units because it's just newtons divided by newtons. This number is just a ratio of two forces. So the coefficient of friction between the book and the table surfaces 0 0.21.